Hello everybody and welcome back to Jake's Saucy Stuff and today we are in my front room, living room, parlour, I don't know whatever the hell you want to call it and we're here with my birthday present from the parents, thank you very much to them and it is a Flex Innovations RV8 green in the day version, wasn't too bothered about the lights a model this big for me would just be no good for, for, for night flying so I'll have a quick perusal of the box um, of course mine won't do that, that's the night version um, optional floats, I haven't got that because I don't live anywhere big enough to fly this with the have water massive canopy, internal structures of the motor the landing gear and where the wing tube fits through are all one piece vortex generators and lights both on the day and the night version they have those lights and it is bloody massive as you can see for the size of it compared to Kiki um, if we have a browse down this side those are some specifications for you if you want to pause that go down here as well comes of course with the Potenza gyro system now these are unfortunately upside down um, maybe editing me can remember to put this the right way up. If not, basically, gyro, speed controller, servos, recommended battery, a keychain camera thing, which nobody uses, and um, uh, um, information about the motor. So, I'll take the lid off and I'll show you. I have had stuff out of the box with it being a birthday present. I did sort of have, you know, have a bit of a, a play with it when my parents were there. Um, but I'll take the lid off and we'll have a quick look. Um, and I'll see you all very shortly. Okay, so the lid is off. One thing that I do want to remind you is I have been in this already. So some things are not in the right place. I have had the book out and had a look. There is some gluing needed on this. You actually glue the vertical stabilizer on. And one of my main observations with this so far is the fact that um, there are a few just small mold issues. Again, it's one of these things where... I think two issues. One, they are smaller around, so they're probably not, you know, as many, you know, as much attention paid as, as something to like a rising hobby. And second of all, I think because it's made to be quite light, that the overall foam density isn't as high as some others. Uh, but overall, very happy with it. So we've got the wings on the other side. The book, I think, was down there. There are two tails, two halves. They are screw on. Doesn't come with a receiver. That's just the one that I'm using, the R2008 SB. Uh, that's the FR, no, the, what is it, the S FHSS instead of fast because it's about 30 quid cheaper and don't really need fast for this. Um, that's the, so we've got tails, one wing, um, the fuselage obviously, we've got stuff left over for the um, gyro unit, we've got the vertical stabiliser there, other wing. Spinner, the motor, the motor actually isn't attached, but just bought on, and then the cowl. Um, underneath the plane, you've got like your wing tube and a few other smaller bits, which we'll get to when we get to that. And actually, um, I'll take the fuselage out and then you can see what's underneath. Bear me a sec. So, yeah, under the fuselage, we've got our spats, wheels, massive 17 by 7 prop, uh, I think it's 17 by 7. Um, wing tube, other wing tube, and then that bag is speed, con um, speed controller book, tail wheel, control linkages, that type of thing. But um, yeah, that's everything that's in the box. We will have a look in the book and see what we need to do first. And in fact, actually what I may do is just get the fuselage over and we can have a quick look inside the fuzz. Back shortly. So as you can see, it's a massive canopy area on this. Um, there's your Potenza flight controller, RX goes there, comes with EC5, um, I'm going to probably, oh it's tire wrapped on so I might not, I'm deciding what to do about the speed controller, whether I'm going to have an adapter or, or cut this off and solder it, um, I'm probably going to solder it in. Um, it has got the world's longest um, servo wire, I presume this is for when it's used in jets, maybe. I don't know, but it's bloody massive. I'll have to tidy that up a little bit. Um, put all these cables there for your uh, wings and uh, for your ailerons and flaps. About a billion straps for holding your battery. And I'm going to put some Velcro under it, of course, as well. Stop it sliding backwards and forth. 
100 amp, is it 100 amp or 120? 100 amp speed controller with a separate 10 amp back. I mean, the 10 amps is good. The only thing that I don't like about it is it's an inline back, so it's on the throttle cable. If your speed controller sets on fire, this won't work. Whereas if that was wired to the power lead sort of halfway up or at this end, and a separate servo wire just for the back, it's a lot more reliable. That's how for it to be done. But we'll leave it like this for now and see how we go on. Um, metal geared servos all around. They are sort of standard size servos, which is a bit strange for foamy, but of course it is a massive foamy. It's a 75 inch wingspan. Um, having inquired about some custom wing bags from Revic, possibly. As long as they don't come back, so it'll be about a thousand pounds because that seems to be what they go for, especially if it's a custom jobby. I've sent them the rough dimensions and we'll see if they ever get back to me or not because they haven't had it yet. But here's the weekend, so I'll let them off. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all the bits. I'm going to get the book here and see what we need to do first, and I'll move stuff over to the workshop and we can get started. Um, but uh, I'll see you in there. Okay, so the first job for us to do is to look at assembling. The undercarriage, which was not in the box because it was in here. Apologies for that. Um, I do like the fact that the flex innovation is like engraved in, but you can tell that it has been stamped out. But overall, it wins points because of the engraved logos. Um, the point where it loses points, 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 is the fact that a lot of this stuff is mucky. Like, it just feels like it's been in a mucky factory. Like... This one's the worst. Look at that. Um, you know, it's it's a bit funny when you have to, when you know you get your brand new model out and you've got to clean it. Um, again, I, I do like flex stuff. That's why I keep buying them. This is now my third plane from them. Um, but oh, it's just some of the stuff is just a bit eh, sometimes. Um, but again, they are a small company. Um, I'm maybe slightly biased, but if was, if if I was buying stuff from Horizon Hobby and it came in that state, I'd send the fucker back. Um, and this is a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to go and get some elbow grease on that to uh, clean it. Um, and then like the like the bottom of the plane looks like it's marked, but it isn't. It's just muck. So when it's been built, it looks like it's been left on a cupboard somewhere. You know, while they move on to the next one or whatever, and it's got mucky. Um, but I mean that is awful, 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 awful. Um, but I'm going to go and give that a clean in sink and that'll be fine. If that's all that's wrong with it, stuff needs cleaning, I will accept that. Uh, you know, obviously damage is something different, but um, cleaning, uh, I, I can do that. Uh, but yeah, I'll go and clean these and I'll be right back with you and we'll follow the book on assembling this. All right, so I have spent a few minutes with some um, hand wash soap, um, some water, which to be fair was not warm. Um, and I've given them a wash and they've come out more or less all right. There are those scratches and sort of dirt marks there. This one's more or less fine. Um, was that on the inside? I'm not too bothered about. Again, somewhere that Flex could improve by giving the factory a, a bucket and a mop. <laughs> but um, yeah, another thing I've seen is that these wheels are not um, cut in the middle for the for the spoke but to be honest with you it's very rare that they are <laughs> so um i'm not going to grab about that too much um so we need to assemble these now so that what we need to do first of all is actually take these apart so that they're into two separate bits um then we mount it to the actual undercarriage a bit like so and then we'll go from there so uh let me get these apart and we'll we'll, we'll get going Okay, one of the things that I do like about um, doing stuff when uh, the parents are out is that I can be as loud as I want, I can project so that hopefully I don't have to then like turn the sound up in video editing like I normally have to do. Um, that's not happening. Okay, we'll go for a bigger screwdriver. There we are. Taking these out. There are one, two, three, four, five screws to take out per wheel. What I might do is do one with you guys and then uh, 
did the other one off camera just to save us all a bit of time. I'm not sure if I will have done this as a unboxing and then separate build video or not. So I should have said we're building a Flex Innovations RV8. A 6S 75 inch wingspan foamy. Um, if you don't want to Google a picture, you kind of imagine a, a crop duster type thing. But the RV8 is especially made for aerobatics. Um, and of course this one is even more made for aerobatics. It will do lazy 3D. Um, it's not your extreme freestyle stuff. Oh, brother stuff, yes. There's still a bit of soap in this. Okay. So, we need to make sure... Uh, I'm going to presume it's that way around. I'd probably be wrong. So, now what we need to do is we need to get that on there, like so. Bolt through there, I imagine. Oops, I'm getting water on the book. That's not a good idea. Um, yeah, so look at this. Let's use a number one Phillips screwdriver. The screwdriver pan, blah, blah, blah. Look at the landing gear. Place the inside half of the wheel pan against the outside landing gear and and the wheel pan retaining plate against the inside. I know that the retaining plates are identical. Use a Number one foot screwdriver, a 3 by 12 screw. So, we'll get our bag of bits. Speed controller instructions, two control rods, a little tube, I think, for the tail, some little clear stickers, the tail wheel assembly, wing retention bolts, I believe. Servo horns, cowling screws, nicely labelled, dummy exhausts, stab screws, and finally landing gear screws, which is what we're looking for. So, there are four regular bolts and four self tappers and I believe it's the self tappers we're going to be using on this undercarriage can I yep um, we have got these bit of plastic to go in here It says somehow. Aha. So then that's just a screw from the inside. There. Through. And into the other thing. From what I can work out. Might have been best getting this screw started. Apologies if you can't really see a lot, that's massively sideways. Yes, I'm gonna get this screw started, I think.
That's a bit more like it. Okay. So. Here we are. And then I'm just going to screw it from the other side. And fingers crossed. Feels alright, I think. Before we go any further, that looks about right, okay. Don't overdo it because of course the screen is plastic. Just nip it up. And that's what we're left with. So now um I'm gonna have a look at doing the Next bit, so blah, 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 yes. Locate the wheel and axle assembly and use a 1.5 millimeter hex drive to remove the screws, set screws in the wheel collars. Apply thread lock to the blah, 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 and reassemble. Slide the thread lock end to the axle. Hmm, okay. So. Let that go. It's got to go like that, surely, yeah. And then... I see how it goes. Right, okay. So, with this, this peg goes in there, nice and easy. And then this goes on... like that. Obviously, with the, with the hole going through. All right. So... You don't actually take that good screw out at all, really. That's a bit weird. Oh, come back. So, we can put that on there. Like that. Hard for me to film this. This is the type of thing where if it was A, my workshop, and B, the roofs were a bit higher, um, I'd install a camera on the roof. Right, okay, so I put that on loosely, so the wheel is roughly on, and you can see that's how it's assembled there. Um, you need to use a spanner, because this thing in here, if you can see, has got flat bits, that section there. Um, so you can use a spanner and then another spanner to tighten that up. So what size spanner is it? Does it say it's M5? I believe. Ten, seven five the old uh, sort of glow plug spanner type thing yep and then i know people will shout at me for using an improper tool but considering we're not actually going on a knot it'll do uh adjustable spanner that's a bit too thick oi, oi. um right we'll use pliers then yeah, pliers will do this. So, again, I have to sort of show you, but I'm using my pliers on this bit. And then using my 5 mil cock spanner somewhere else. Or on the actual nut itself, so we can tighten that up. Oh, wait, that's... That's, uh, that was quite tight already. Okay, that'll do. I'll keep an eye on it. Um, and then simply, we're over the opposite side. We put that on there, like so. Now you can screw all those screws back in. As you can see, if you are on a, on a grass runway, you've still got plenty of um, wheel outside of the spat, so don't be worried about having to take your spats off. Um, it should be fine. One thing that I will say is that it looks a bit yellow compared, and you've got this on. These spats are piss poor. I'm going to say that now. Um, the way they work is fine, but the way they've been machined is quite low 
quality. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get all those screws back in and do the other side. And I'll show you once I'm finished. And for now, I will watch more um, stuff on my Plex server. What's it called? Um, oh, Fools and Horses. Because um, not all of it is on BritBox. So I bought all the DVDs and put it on a Plex server. I'll be back shortly. If that means nothing to you, don't panic. Nothing to do with Plex. Back shortly. Okay, so we've got it finished. One of these screws, I think it's that one wouldn't go in, but it seems strong enough. They haven't gone all the way in, I don't think. Certainly not as strong as that one feels, obviously, because there's a screw missing. But all we've got to do now is get the fuselage in here. I need to get the stand up. We are then screwing the undercarriage on and then moving on to the tail wheel. So let me get the stand up, fetch the fuselage, and we'll continue. Okie dokie, so we have the undercarriage attached with the other four screws that were in the landing gear bag. And I've also brought in the tail section to fit the table. So I've, I've removed the little uh, bracket here for the three screws. Um, you've put this in like so. This got this cover that, so the table can come out. Put this cover on, screw it up, and that is the tail wheel attached. So we'll, we'll get on and do that. Okay, so I managed to get power lead soldered up correctly that's ready to go back in i'm going to leave it until i've got the motor on the front um next thing for us to do in the book was to set up our flight mode in the radio that's why the old 16 is here we've done that set up as per this increase that to 125 put all the switches in the right place i've got that one for flight mode that one for flap and when we get things together i am going to have a switch to uh um I was going to say I'm going to have a switch to make the other ones work together, that's not how it works. And I'm, but I'm going to have a slider here to act as a pro brake. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll see if we can make that work, I'm not 100% sure if we can, but we'll, we'll try. Um, so now we're on to the horizontal stabilizer. Um, this should have glued by now. It's been like two or three hours. It should have at least sort of set. Um, so we need the stab screws, which are here. We also need the stabilizers from the other room. And I'll be right back and we'll try and install it. So it turns out actually that that long stick that I thought was like a second uh, wing tube isn't. And it's actually for the turbo. Look how massive it is. I mean, that's the, that's the length of the turbo compared to the length of the tube. It's a bit... Astonishing, really. Um, so, we're going to put this on. It's four screws again. Stab screws there. Screw it on. Uh, and that's the tail finished. And then based off of this, uh, what was the next step? Aha! Control rods and stuff. So, uh, be back very shortly. Okay, so now the plane is switched on. I've got it in the standard sort of uh, mode with no gyro on. Um, I've checked it because if I put it in this switch, you can hear the servos moving. Um, so what I've done is I've got the arm sort of, it's hard to show you really, but I've got the arms connected under here to each control. And now I need to line them up and put in these last screws again. These all came in the elevator rudder servo horn screws. And uh, yeah, once we've done that, um, we'll have movement of things. Alrighty, so I managed to get these on. The elevators were perfect. The rudder I've had a bit of a nightmare with trying to get roughly straight. That's the closest I can do it. Because of course you can't put sub trim in, so you've got to do it all on the arm, which is a pain. Uh, it's annoying because on his old planes, Kiki, he used to have this fantastic, like, it was like a square thing in here that you could put a spanner on. And if you just did it one way, it got bigger. If you just did it the other way, it got smaller. Oi, oi, all our misses. Now, one thing that I will say that is a bit... I know, it seems a little bit slow to me, that's all. Um, like, in the time it takes to get to, like... Actually, I have suddenly realised that it is running on a 6-volt night cab, so I'm not going to comment on that, because um, it might be just that battery is getting flat. Um, right, so everything is set up as it should be. And then it's going on about wing installation, um, which will be exciting, but I'm not sure if that is something that I'm going to have to do outside. I'm not sure if I can fit 75 inches in here. Ooh, ah, misses again. 
Um, so I'll be back very shortly. Okay, so I managed to get the wings on. Eventually, they were a bit of a bar steward, to be brutally honest with you. Um, basically, make sure you force the tube all the way in on both wings before you put them on. Where the glues come through, and there's like some plastic things in the formers. You basically need to push through that and clean them out once or twice um, in order to get the wings all the way on. Um, so, yeah, if you sort of feel a bit of resistance, feel free to go again and, and, and poke through. I'm sure there's a... Oh, that's what she said, joking there somewhere. Um... Hold on. Oh no, that's not right. I thought there was like a, a... I mean, like, if you look at this, this doesn't look right. But... It's about right. They're not quite the same, but it's close enough. Um, if you, also, if you'll notice... Let me, the lights are struggling because I'm running on like a 6 volt night cab because the instructions have still not told me to put the motor on, which is really, really strange. Um, so I've got no speed controller in at the moment, or, or speed controller to catch up to anything. And then it says install the exhausts. And then finally it says install the motor. Just really, really weird, in my opinion. Um, but yeah. So I'll go and get the motor now, we can have a look at installing that on the back very shortly. Okay, so our next thing to do is the motor. Um, I've taken it out of its very nondescript black box. Um, so what comes with it, you've obviously got the motor of course, 500 kV, bloody massive thing. I'm actually slightly concerned of my radio being there because of how many magnets are going to be in it. Uh, cross mount, um, prop adapter, uh, a bunch of screws. These are the screws both for the prop adapter the cross mount and to bolt it to the plane as far as I can work out. So we will start our work first of all by screwing on this cross brace bracket thing above. Hopefully you can still hear me when you're facing the table. So we've got bits on the floor which is a really really good start. Is this it? I hope it is. Nice and big. That's what she said. Yeah. Alright so We've got four of each screw, plus what I th think must be one for the spinner. So, I think that's the one for the spinner. They're the four for putting the cross mount on, that's this thing. These four, I think, will be for the prop adapter, and these four are to mount everything to the plane. Now, because I've got no space, I can't really show you me doing this, because obviously there's a massive bloody plane in the way. Um, so, I'm just going to screw it on and then show you, because I don't have a way of setting the camera up in a decent place without accidentally trying to knock something off. So, we'll get that bolted up and I'll be with you very shortly. And there we have it. The motor is now attached. I've got the wires going that side because then it'll line up where the speed controller should be or I'm going to put it back. And, uh, yes. Good job, bud. Uh, I now need to go and get the prop and the spinner. Before I put the prop on, I suppose I should really put the canopy on. So, or the cowl on. So, I've got that. I've got the two screws because there is a cowling screws thing here. I'll be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to bother with the coming exhaust. I'll put them in the window just in case, but they'll probably stay there until they're thrown away. Um, but I can use these to screw the canopy on. There you go, through on these. Also, it looks as if the spinner is just the screw on tight with no back plate, which I'm not overly impressed with, but we will see how we get on. So it's time for me to get this screwed on. Okay. So we have the cowl on, I'm putting the prop on now. As is becoming a little bit of a theme, the canopy is not the easiest to put on, but it is there, or the cowl, should I say. So now I've got to put this uh, spinner on, well, do these two first, and then we'll have a look at putting the spinner on, which I can tell is going to be a challenge again. Well, that shows what I know, this actually went on absolutely completely fine. Um, I thought it was going to be a bit of a pain because of lining it up, uh, but no, it's fine. And with that, actually, we're really not far off being done. Um, so look at the instruction book. C a G, which for some reason is measured from the back of the wing, which is confuse everybody. Um, yeah, I just need to plug everything in really and make sure everything works as it should, which is going to be a little bit scary to the point where I may even just take all this back off again, just to be safe. But um, yeah, let's uh, have a go, have everything wired in and go from there. Right, okay, fingers crossed this, I hope, uh, hope this sounds alright, this is my first time testing this particular setup for audio recording. Um, so, 
Um, it's it's done. It's ready for its maiden flight. Um, the main things that I had to do left from that clip um, was the flaps. Um, in terms of the flaps, um, the way that it, that it worked out the box was that it was sort of up, middle, and down, which isn't right. You're going to have middle down a bit and down a bit more. Um, I did that by um, instead of it having been plus a hundred, minus a hundred, with an offset of zero, I had zero for switch up or, or, or level. Then an offset of 50 to the middle and then 50 down. So it's 0 plus 50 plus 50 essentially. Um, and that works as it should do. Uh, maximum flap as possible on the full end and then just made the line look straight so I knew it was in the middle. It does say in the book to have minus 17% down elevator at the same time. Um, the way that that works is, is that if you mix it together, um, it's minus 17 for middle and minus 17 for down. But it's 17% of how much flap you have. So you could almost think of it as 17 for one and 34, double 17, 34 for the other. Um, so you need to make sure that when you have it set up that it um, goes 17 and then a little bit more. Um, if you have it the same amount on each one, then that's wrong. Um, yeah, the flaps are done. COG, I did that. Um, you have to measure it from the back of the room, which is a bit weird. And it's 275 to 285. If I put a dot, 280 it will go from there. Trouble is the dot has worn off. I could really do put some like little stickers underneath. Um, it's a shame that there's no like colour scheme thing that it lines up with. Uh, yeah, the CFG is done. Um, 6S5000 energy heavy duty. Um, the back of the battery lines up with the front of the first set of holes for the battery. You'll need to have a look inside, it makes more sense. ESC um, and general sort of stuff on the inside. ESC and Becker tie wrapped to the side as they were at the box. Um, the um, Velcro for the receiver and the receiver just next to the um, tender, I forgot what it's called, the little gyro thing, and then the antenna is just taped in place. One antenna facing forward, so when you're taught rolling, it's correct, and then one sideways, so in normal flight, it's right. Possibly would have been better with the arrow pointing up instead of right, but never mind. Um, it'll do for now. The um, I also put Velcro in for the battery, um, so that won't shift backwards and forwards, just a big long strip front to back. Um, last but not least, wing bags. Um, I'm in talks with Revic to see what they can do for me. Um, we'll see what it's like, I've set them pictures, set them dimensions, we'll see what they come back with price-wise and see if I want to go ahead. I don't want to spend like £100 on bags, but it's like 50 60 70 maybe. Um, but yeah, um, that's it. Fingers crossed this is recorded alright, and uh, this is also my first time attempting to do with iMovie on a MacBook, so we'll see how that all goes, but thank you for watching, I'll see you all in the next one, if you like this, please like, um, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff, um, I decided I'll do a longer video today, um, that does like an unboxing and the build all in one, um, because it's a fairly easy build, um, and if you have any comments or feedback at all, please leave it in the uh, comments down below, and thank you for watching, I'll see you all in the next one, bye bye.